what we are trying to do is trying to make a better use of data. There are plenty of data which exist in, in the world, um, but for a certain uh, proportion of diseases, they are not probably optimally uh, used. And we are in this business of a, of a evidence ecosystem where we are trying to make more sense of uh, all of that. So um, coming back often to this slide, but I think it's illustrating very clearly uh, the problem that we are facing. If we compare what I, we call uh, neglected infectious disease, and I'm not talking about ne neglected tropical disease, which is a group uh, of disease, which is probably limiting uh, by WHO. But if we try to compare the neglected infectious disease versus the disease which affect the wealthy world, there is one thing which is striking, is that the volume of data and the volume of clinical trial is massively different. And um, this is the area where we are we are focusing on and it goes down to a ridiculous uh, number in terms of uh, of this research and uh, which we can probably make a, a parallel uh, ridiculous number of funding uh, associated to that and so we know this inequity but what can we do uh, with that well we can collate standardized uh, clinical pharmacology and molecular data and that's what we uh, have been doing for about 15 years and to try to combine that in a single data set, which increased statistical power. So the, the, the model is fairly simple, or the idea is fairly simple, but uh, the question is how you do, you do that. <clears throat> so one thing, um, this is a, a selection of a, a systematic review that we have done in the context of a um, drug efficacy. And when we are, we are trying for all these diseases to measure how many trials exist in the world, which are actually the support for um, evidence, well, for guideline treatment and, and evidence gathering. And it's it's shocking. Um, this is something around, so it's not all 30 years, but close to 30 years. This is the number of uh, efficacy trial or, and that could be randomized control trials, uh, a minority, but more uh, single arm trials, which are the support of the current therapeutic guidelines. And that's really, really bad because that translates into evidence which are not very strong. The data are scattered around the world, sample size are small. And I would say this is true for this disease, but also it's true for, in for instance, for COVID in the context of a, a low and middle income countries. So that's uh, what we call, sorry, uh, our roadmap. Um, and uh, what we are doing when we start working on a disease, uh, we don't claim that we are the expert of the disease. We are rather claiming that we have a know-how into data gathering and, and data platform. So we scope uh, how much data exists or studies exist. We try to develop with the community uh, a clear research agenda of what we could do if we were to gather this data together. We do the curation of the data, so the standardization, and we do the IPD meta-analysis, or we do it in collaboration with the uh, uh, with the, that research community, with the idea that eventually the work will translate into um, a guideline and uh, uh, something that policymakers will take on board. One thing that we are uh, putting quite a lot of a, of effort is the equity uh, in, in the business because. Essentially, doing that from Oxford and expecting that this will be picked up by the communities in the various countries where these diseases are endemic doesn't work like that. And there is a strong uh, effort and a stronger effort that we are making over the years in engaging the community and uh, the people who are in the first place generating the data. So there is a lot of engagement, uh, which is a, a, something a bit tricky because on the one hand, funders are happy to fund uh, the platform and the IPD meta-analysis, so the science bit, but they don't want to fund this collaboration and this engagement with the community. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to, to, to see that uh, uh, there are programs like AFOX and others that we probably should be working more closely to, to engage the community and making sure that actually the people who are generating primary data are also part of that effort. But right now they are, but it takes a bit of, a, of effort. Briefly, just to illustrate what we are doing. So we, ga we gather data from all around the world in shape and format that they have been collecting. We standardize that into a CDISC standard, which is uh, recognized uh, uh, standard for uh, gathering data. 
the data are then in the uh, in a safe repository, and then we do uh, we do or others will do IPD uh, meta analysis on the basis of that. But let me give you an example uh, of how that has been picked up, in particular by uh, WHO. So, very briefly, you know that the treatment of uh, uh, malaria is uh, artemidine combination therapy. The first drug which has been uh, of the ACT, which has been registered, was in '99. Uh, the first dispersal uh, formulation of the drug was done 10 years ago. And in 2021, about 1 billion artemidine lumefantrine, which is the main uh, ACT which is currently on the market to represent probably 70% of what is on the market, has been sold. That's a lot of treatment uh, in, in the space of, uh, of about 20 years. Now, if we take uh, in particular, the example of a pregnant woman, clearly WHO uh, highlight that this is a group who is particularly at risk of a, a failing treatment or having severe form of treatment. Nonetheless, it took uh, quite a long time before WHO would recommend a treatment for a pregnant woman, which was based on artemidine combination therapy, not because um, they were uh, a particular fear of that, but because they were very little data, as opposed to the recommendation was quinine, and quinine was not because it was based on very solid data, but because quinine, which was registered more than 70 years ago, was registered saying that it was fi fine and safe to, to uh, use in pregnant women, but certainly not based on very solid data. So in 2015, uh, WHO recommended uh, the use of uh, uh, ACT or in particular artemidine lumefantrine for the second and third trimester of, uh, of uh, uh, pregnancy. But this evidence was named strong recommendation, low evidence. And so we did a, uh, an IPD meta-analysis in 20, which was published in 2020, which is showing uh, a better uh, strength of evidence in that. Now, we are just currently starting a discussion with WHO to convince them that actually this is creating a stronger evidence and this should be highlighting in their uh, guidelines, but this is a strong recommendation with strong evidence. In 2022, we did a second uh, IPD meta-analysis, which was in the first trimester, and this has been picked up more rapidly by WHO, and it's now in their uh, guidelines as a strong re recommendation, but still with low certainty of evidence because the volume of data that we are dealing with is, uh, is limited. So this is just to illustrate that, yes, we can do this kind of job, but it, net, it takes a lot of data. It takes a lot of engagement. Clearly, there is uh, this particular IPD meta-analysis was uh, looking at a 1,000 women who have been exposed with an ACT uh, in the first trimester. If you recall, there's 1 billion treatment which has been sold. There is probably a bit more than 1,000 women who have been exposed. But that the disconnect in between the reality and, and what we can do and how we can accelerate that. Because uh, on the other hand, it's not very satisfying that it's taking 23 years to, to get to that recommendation. A point on, on impact, what we are also trying to do is to engage with the community and making sure that uh, this effort and the use of this data or the reuse of the data is not only done by us, but is done in collaboration and, and led by uh, colleagues who are sitting in uh, LMIC. So uh, this is happening as we speak, and we are now reaching a point where this is uh, split in, in between two. So there is half of the uh, investigators who are leading this work who are coming from LMIC. We hope that this will increase. I think there is a lot of capacity building that has to be done. IPD meta-analyses are not necessarily very complicated, but there's still um, something to be done in terms of training and, and, and support for doing that uh, appropriately. In terms of capacity strengthening, we are working in different areas on that. So we are working with TGHN and Moru, in particular with EDCTP and the Network of Excellence in training and, and providing uh, uh, data sharing curriculum for EDCTP African networks. Uh, and that's really important is to try to give a guidance on how you do that. With TDR, uh, we have uh, had for many years TDR fellows who have been joining us and then have gone back to their home institution with whom we have collaboration. We have been uh, uh, working on a project called SORT IT, uh, which is uh, uh, 
supported by TDR and which is training people in the, on the ground. We have a collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research, where we are working with three institutions uh, of, uh, of ICMR, also supporting young researchers to do the kind of work that I described. And I'm also very glad of, uh, and, and pleased that the uh, that AFOX have been supporting a fellows, a senior fellow from uh, Sudan, who, considering the current situation in Sudan, is a, is a, is not able to to do his work while actually. This particular area of work is very neglected, and and his expertise is, is badly needed to continue working in the in, for this particular disease, which is visceral leishmaniasis. And that's my last slide. Uh, just to uh, highlight the three areas that we are putting a lot of effort that I was trying to illustrate. So equity, we think that this is extremely important because if we want to become a data a global data platform, it comes only if we uh, are putting together an equity uh, mechanism. Uh, the science, it's about uh, doing this, uh, this uh, relatively sophisticated analysis, but we can do more. We don't have the capacity of doing everything. So bringing more people on board is critically important. And we've got a repository which is now functioning on a relatively large set of data. And this is just to uh, give you a flavor of the dif of different diseases that we are working on. Uh, but very happy to discuss uh, further with you. Thank you.